The retina lines the back of the eye and allows for light to be absorbed into the eye and the retina transfers and processes that light into the optic nerve and the optic nerve brings the information to the brain allowing one to see. The retina is like the wallpaper that lines the back of the eye. When it detaches, you can think about wallpaper peeling off the wall. You lose vision if the retina is detached. And as retinal surgeons, we can reattach the retina and allow the patient to see again by putting the retina back where it should be. Conditions that can predispose a patient to retinal detachment include lattice degeneration, which is thinning of the peripheral retina, conditions such as high myopia, which means the eye is long from front to back, and when the eye is long, the retina is also thin because of the length of the eye. Also, aging. As we get older, the gel inside the eye, which is called the vitreous, becomes more liquefied, and as the gel liquefies, the gel actually pulls on the peripheral retina and causes a retinal tear. And the retinal tear without treatment, such as laser retinoplexy, if the tear is undiagnosed, then the retina detaches from the tear. So the goal of a surgeon in terms of treating a retinal detachment is to close the holes that cause the breaks as well as reattach the retina. There's actually four methods to fix a retinal detachment. The first method is called scleral buckle. It is a silicone band which we place around the outside of the eye to try and reapproximate the retina to the outside of the eye to seal the breaks. We usually use laser or freezing treatment with this. The second method is called a vitrectomy. That's where we go inside the eye, we make three little incisions, and remove the gel called the vitreous inside the eye. We also use laser, usually to seal around the breaks in the retina, and then we use a gas bubble at the end of the surgery to tamponade the retina. The third method is called pneumatic retinoplexy. This is an in-office procedure where we use a gas bubble, along with usually laser or freezing treatment, to seal the breaks in this retinal detachment. And the fourth method is just using laser or laser retinoplexy. And we use laser to seal around the breaks and to demarcate the area that's detached if it's small enough. Now, depending on the method used and the pathology involved, the success rate is usually about nine out of 10 eyes. And the method that's employed really depends on what we see in the office. Floaters and flashes are very common in the population. And the reason is the gel inside the eye, which is called the vitreous, when we're born, it's more like jello, and when we get older, the gel liquefies and becomes more like fluid. Now, if you imagine these floaters are little particles in the space of the cavity of your eye, and when they're floating around in gel versus liquid, you don't see it when it's in gel, but when it's in liquid form, you can see it. So patients often will say that they see little bugs or cobwebs or things floating around. The reason we're concerned as from a retina standpoint is that new floaters can be a sign of a retinal tear, and when they're tugging on the retina, it can cause a retinal tear, subsequently a retinal detachment. Usually, floaters are off to the side and are not visually significant, and we usually do not recommend surgery for floaters unless they're significant and in the middle of the vision. Flashes. Flashes are similar to floaters in terms of that they could mean that there's a problem in the peripheral retina. Flashes mean that the gel is tugging on the peripheral retina, and the eye does not feel pain, it only sees light. So when it's tugging on the peripheral retina, it could mean that there's a new break or tear and subsequently a retinal detachment. So in general, when patients see either floaters and or flashes, we, we like them to come in to get a scleral depressed exam so we can check the peripheral retina. Well, my name is Franco, and um, I was born with bad eyesight, but when I was younger, I never, I, you know, I never knew it because I, I think as a child you're just <laughs> running around and you don't know what normal is or what what uh, sight is supposed to be like. So, um, but it didn't bother me. I was still running around playing with bikes and as I got older, when I hit 14, that's when I had a, a retinal detachment in the left eye, but I, I didn't notice because the, the sight was so bad, so I, I just never never knew it was it was bad, so I did end up losing sight uh, completely in the left eye. Well, when I first met Franco, he had already had multiple surgeries on the left eye, and that was his blind eye. He actually, his left eye does not see at all. And his right eye had a history of retinal detachment, and he had multiple 
kind of complications from having previous surgeries. And one of them was uh, he had an area where his retina was being pulled up um, by membranes uh, centrally in his vision. And this is his only eye. So he has no light perception in the fellow eye. And in his, quote, good eye, he saw very poorly because he had a lot of membranes pulling on the central part of his vision. And in addition, he had a lot of um, vitreous debris or floaters blocking his vision. And he's a very active young man with just great, um, I think, he's very goal-oriented and inspired. And so when he first came to see me, he said, you know, it's really hard for me to achieve my goals with the limited vision that I have. And he, it was really inspiring to me that when I met him, he didn't say, I'm just going to quit because I can't see. He said, hey, how can we work together to help me see better? And he even asked me on our first appointment how he could help us with other patients, inspire them to not feel depressed and not give up. So I was really amazed with his his story and that he has been able to persevere and not only just persevere but like totally overcome obstacles I would think would challenge most people. So so he's always stood out as one of the most unique patients from not just his background but just his outlook on life. I really think he can teach the rest of us on how to live and how to contribute more to society. She was very uh, motivating and inspiring, so she just kept uh, just giving me that that um, that that love or support. So it gave me more fuel to keep on going and, and keep reaching further. Being blind has made my vision much clearer. I see myself in pure blackness. I need no mirror, and from up close or afar, I now see people for who they truly are. And how do you explain color to a person born blind? You have to ask yourself how is color defined. Color is electromagnetic radiation. Vibration turns into sound. Sound resonates through the mouth, sending out emotions that'll make you smile or frown. You see me, I'm a blind star, blinded way before stardom. However, there is no one blinder than those who choose not to see. You have to choose what to be. It's essential that we exceed and excel beyond potential. We are all blind to certain degrees. The mind is the only thing that sees. So let us all shine in time at least because we are all truly divine indeed. We were interested in his care and we thought there was hope to help him see better. He, he told me at that point he felt like that was kind of a game changer in his life that there were doctors who felt vested in his care. And every time I see him now he's like smiling, he's just like over the moon. He told me we gave him a life that he could have never had.